class is over for the day and it's time for a sing-along. The teachers at this government school are Buddhist, the students Muslim. And they're hoping to inspire their pupils and their loyalty to the state with nationalistic songs in praise of Thailand. On the surface, at least, it's a harmonious picture. But behind the smiles, there's another story. Teachers and pupils alike live in real fear of insurgents who are armed with a very different kind of message. A teacher at a school near here was shot dead right in front of his class. He was still holding a piece of chalk when he fell down dead. I think the people who killed the teacher at Barang School should all go to hell. Maybe they got the wrong ideas in their head about religion. Maybe that's why they do this. The dead teacher from Barang School was a close friend of this man, preacher Naradi, himself a Buddhist and a school principal. He says he's on a hit list and he discreetly showed me the government issued gun he now carries with him everywhere. He explained that he keeps the weapon buried in his clothes so as not to unnerve the children. Both Muslim and Buddhist teachers are now allowed to carry guns to school so that we can protect ourselves. Everyone's a target. I think they're targeting teachers because we're role models for the children. So killing teachers or burning down schools disrupts the whole community. Their aim is to make a big noise in the media and forcing schools to close is big news. But for the insurgents, teachers like Mr. Naradi are valid targets. They're brought in from outside and as such are seen as symbols of a Thai government that cares little for ethnic Malays, their language or way of life. Nearly 80 teachers have now died in three years of violence as schools like this one become a front line in the conflict. And with insurgents going after such soft targets, the authorities are constantly having to adapt to their unorthodox tactics. I had come to southern Thailand to investigate a conflict about which little is known or understood. This is a very different Thailand to the more familiar idyllic tourist destination of glossy brochures. Scores are injured and killed here in almost daily bombings, shootings and beheadings. Suspicion runs deep among the local population, mostly ethnic Malay Muslims. More than 2,000 have died since a disparate group of separatist insurgents launched a campaign of terror and intimidation against the largely Buddhist government and Muslims who collaborate with them. On the morning I arrived, a policeman died and 18 others were injured in this bomb attack in the city of Yala. Insurgents exploded a bomb in a motorbike and then detonated a second device after police arrived at the scene. This video shop was badly damaged and the owner, a Buddhist, is clearly agitated. I think someone's trying to stir things up. I don't know who's the real target. No one really knows. <laughs> but I don't want to say too much because I may get in trouble. Are you afraid to say? Are you afraid to say? The next day, a visit by Thailand's armed forces chief who had come to reassure the population. In contrast to the ousted government of Taksin Shinawat, the military-installed government that succeeded him has offered an olive branch to the fragmented separatist movement. I'm here today to give support to our soldiers who are here on a difficult mission and to explore new ways to stop the violence. It's a conciliatory message the army chief is spreading round the region. But intention is one thing, implementation quite another. And analysts argue that on the ground, the military's vision has changed little. Recent human rights reports have accused soldiers and police of collective punishment of the local population, using brutal methods to suppress the insurgency, and in the process, perhaps only exacerbating the conflict. 
it look like uh, they have the gap, big gap between policy and practice at the lower levels, and the the people, you know, the the, the communities or, or the villagers uh, are not quite understand about the situation. Uh, they just they just see the same uh, the same measures, the the same styles of uh, operation of the military and the police. Out in the villages, it's hard to find anyone who will admit to supporting those behind this faceless insurgency. But there are plenty who are ready and willing to tell you about human rights abuses at the hands of the security forces. In this village in Patani province, we met the family of Sukri Adam, who was recently arrested in connection with the beheading of an old man in the area a grisly murder claimed by an insurgent group. His sister wept as she claimed her brother, a university graduate, had been falsely accused and then badly tortured in detention in an attempt to wring a confession from him. He's innocent, yet they beat him badly. Why did they do this to him? It's a question I wanted to discuss with a young English teacher, but at the prison where Sukri is being held, I was refused permission to interview him. But some human rights activists managed to get pictures of Sukri following his alleged torture, and his case has become something of a cause celeb. This activist claims Sukri is just one of many who have been tortured by police and the military since the new government took power suggesting little has changed. Their claims we were unable to independently verify. At military headquarters in Yala, officials admitted that Sukri's case had raised questions, but insisted his was the only one. One case only. Only one case? Yeah. The military spokesman insisted that Sukri's case had been used by the media to exaggerate the scale of the problem. At night, the mosque in Patani appears like a soothing oasis of calm, cut off from the tide of conflict that ebbs and flows all around. And these are the images many Muslims here want the world to see. Peaceful citizens, preoccupied only with prayer. At this mosque, at least, the Thai national flag flutters beside the crescent moon of Islam. But it's an image insurgents here have vowed to banish from the land they claim as their own. Inigo Gilmore, more for news in southern Thailand.